Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, it is good and it's fitting that we celebrate yearly uh, the Day of Reformation. Remembering how God was with his church, giving thanks to God for those who have gone before us to make sure that this word was spread, to make sure that we have the gospel, to make sure that we have the Holy Scriptures, to make sure that we know we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. It's good for us to remember that. To remember that the church is always under attack for that faith and to remember it yearly. However, there's also a dangerous side of celebrating Reformation Day. And that is that we can fall into the same trap as the Jews that Jesus is talking to in our gospel lesson today. We can fall into the trap of merely celebrating something, remembering things like how fun it is to sing a mighty fortress, to get out the red pyramids, maybe to go home and eat some sauerkraut. Who knows what you do for Reformation Day? All of those are good things. However, we can do all of those and lose track of, of what the reason is we're celebrating. That's kind of what happens in our gospel lesson today. The, the Jews are there in Jerusalem having celebrated the Feast of Booths, one of the great feasts, the times of the church year, where they would go and they would gather in Jerusalem and, and remember, remember how God was with them, how God dwelled in a tent with them in the wilderness, how God preserved them and kept them safe. And of course, they would go and they would celebrate these festivals, but they lost track often of what the festival was really about. It became just another cultural thing, another thing that they do, maybe every time around October 31st, as it is for us with Reformation Day. Just another thing that we do and we forget what it's really about. You can see that from the lesson that they have here with Jesus. Jesus talks to them and he says this. He says, if you abide, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Beautiful words. If you remain, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth, and that truth will make you free. They look at him and they say, we're offspring of Abraham. We've never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Offspring of Abraham, they say. That's the right word. But they don't understand. They say, when have we ever been enslaved to anyone? Well, that's exactly what they were celebrating there at the Feast of Booths. How they had been enslaved and held captive in Egypt, the children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all the way down. How they had been enslaved in Egypt, how God had heard their cry, came and delivered and rescued them. Of course they had been enslaved before. They were enslaved later on when they fell away from God's word and rejected those gifts at the temple and fell apart from God, started chasing other idols, and so the Babylonians came over and took them captive. God, of course, set them free again. And even then, in the context of that day, maybe, maybe they knew their past, but they say, we're not enslaved to anybody, but there they are with the Romans occupying their land underneath their rule, paying taxes to Rome. They had forgotten what they were really celebrating. They are just taking joy that they're children of Abraham. What do you mean? We need to be set free. Dear Christians, we can do that with our Lutheran heritage too. Why are we Lutheran? Is it because that's what we were born into? Because it's part of our cultural heritage in this part of our country? Why? Are we Lutheran and can we get caught in the trap of saying things like, how can you say we're enslaved to anybody? We're children of the Reformation. We're children of Luther. Our names are here on the rolls at Trinity. How can you say we're enslaved to anybody? But that's our problem too. See, even if you took apart the idea that the Jews were enslaved when they were in Egypt and then the Babylonian captivity and even a little bit of the Roman Empire at that time, Jesus tells them an even stronger truth something that's true for us too. They say, we've never been enslaved to anybody, and Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, 
everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Even if you take apart the Egyptian slavery, the Babylonian captivity, even the Roman occupation, Jesus says, you all are still enslaved. You are enslaved to sin. It rules your life. We're enslaved as well, too. What holds us in slavery today? Well, you can ask yourself the question, what orders your day? What do you order your whole life around is it work is it money is it security is it your children all those things are good they are pleasing gifts that god has given to us but the problem is we can take these good gifts that god gives to us and we can use them in ways that enslave us by turning away from god 